Welcome back to The Real News Network. Again, we're with Katrina Van Den Heuvel, editor and publisher of The Nation. So there's all kinds of talk about change, and, and, and you've talked about it in your editorial, where you say even some establishment figures now see change because of the extent of the crisis. But, but isn't the question change for whom? Are we, are we going to have change that benefits ordinary people at the end of this whole process? Or is change to somehow just get back to what the status quo was before the crisis? And how do you think progressives are going to respond to the stimulus package? Because there's nothing in this stimulus package, even the conversation, that leads to higher wages. It's a very good question. I think that is the root problem uh, that workers have lost out in these last 30 years at a time of extraordinary productivity. Wages have been stagnant. I also agree with you that for the first time in many years, the idea of government, activist government, smart government, not fighting about the size of it, but ensuring that government can be on the side of working people is an important step on the road to building increased wages for working people. The problem is it isn't built into the stimulus in any real way because the stimulus, as even mainstream liberal good commentators like Paul Krugman will tell you, is not big enough. Joseph Stiglitz has talked at great length about this. So that is the stimulus is the first, plan, first part. It's part of the relief. We now need reform and recovery. And it's not clear to me that the team around Obama is fully capable or willing of thinking about a new economy, which will be needed to raise wages, to empower workers, and to create and save the jobs. Today, we sit here staggering. What it's 50, I read estimates today, 75,000 jobs lost yesterday in one day. So at the same time, what we've seen is the full discrediting of economic theories, this idea of deregulation, the market can save all. People are flirting in mainstream media with nationalization, but nationalization designed to save the financial system. And, and then get out. And then get out. Um, so is there, I think, is there a know, mistake being made that there's such a fight taking place over the size of the stimulus? that there's not enough conversation about stimulus for who? Because if it's just a lot of no, money I think, thrown no, into the economy, we wind up with the same, it's more or less best case scenario, back to status quo. And even that's going to be hard to see for quite some time. The best laid recovery plans do begin to invest in rebuilding America and investing in this green greening of the economy and investing in jobs for the future. But it's not. there's not enough laying down the tracks for a rethinking of the economy. That has to, it seems to me you need the stimulus plan and you need it as big as you can get, but it, ha it cannot stop there. You then need the re-regulation that could protect and empower workers and diminish corporate power and diminish the corruption of corporate power. But then you need, a, in my mind, something that has been off the radar in this country. Fortunately, nationalization is coming back on the radar. But you need an industrial policy. You need national planning. And that may be very tough for people who have, one, been complicit in some of the problems we've seen with deregulation, and two, wary of pushing too hard against some long-held truths in America about individualism. Again, the crisis, which is metastasizing, may provide an opening. We need to be ready. Naomi Klein, our columnist, wrote a book called The Shock Doctrine. Part of the brilliance of the right was to have plans ready in moments of crisis. We're working with a team of economists, and on that end of it, I would argue that there are progressive economists who are, one, somewhat listened to inside corridors of power, and two, have plans. Robert Poland, Jamie Galbraith, Stiglitz, they're not directly inside as they should be, and if the team of rivals concept had been fully implemented, one or two of them should have been in there, yeah. in addition to the Summers, big the Geithners. Yeah. But they are on advisory councils, and they will be in the mix. Well, we talked to James Galbraith, and nobody's talking to him. Jared Bernstein is in the mix, but not in as high a position as he should be. Uh, he's someone who's written eloquently about the disasters of the economy of these last 30 years, sort of the yo-yo economy, you're on your own, Jack, as opposed to we're in this together. So there are, you know, tremendous shifts going on in the larger political culture. Ordinary Americans understanding that they need an active government. That alone is a shift one can work with. Um, we don't know how, we don't yet know 
how bad this is going to get. And that again opens different doors, different doors, because if it doesn't really move in a, in a way that shows people that government can actually improve the conditions of their lives, and we haven't seen that in many, many years, it may be tough to sell people. Obama had uh, dinner at George Will's house uh, about a week ago, uh, as you know, with uh, some of the Charles Krauthammer and uh, several of the other conservative columnists. And uh, David Brooks reported on that meeting on the Stephanopoulos show and said that oh, the, the big question that the conservative columnists raised with him was not about the necessity for stimulus. They kind of, even, even they seem to be on, right, every, there right. seems to be a general consensus that public money should be used to, to, to salvage, salvage the, crisis. the system that they've destroyed. Or yeah, <laughs> exactly. But, but they raised with Obama, who, who, when, when it comes time to face the music and try to deal with the inflation that, that many people are predicting is going to hit as a result of the uh, printing of currency to create a lot of the uh, stimulus, right. uh, would he look at entitlement programs as a way to deal with this? And according to Brooks, he said he would, and then the Washington Post editorial board apparently had a meeting with Obama where Obama said something similar, that he's open to look at entitlement programs. There's going to be a paying of the piper here at some point, one assumes, if the stimulus actually is even effective, right, which right, is another debate. Right. Does it concern you this is even a conversation for Obama? It's our next cover story. William Grider on the false narrative of this crisis of entitlements. Listen, for 30 years in this country, Workers have not participated in the gains. They've worked two or three jobs. Their health care has been gutted. Their pensions ravaged. And now they're talking about entitlement reform on the backs of these workers. I mean, they're asking workers to tighten belts, belts they don't even have. And I think it is a, a big fight ahead. And I think the Pete Peterson Institute, Mr. Peterson of Blackstone Greed, hedge funder, has funded this foundation to fight for the narrative of entitlement crisis, going to be a big fight. And Obama seems more open than he should be. And what the left progressive community needs to do is not only expose the falsehood of this crisis, but lay out how do you rebuild pensions? How do you strengthen the pension system? And how do you fix a health care system that's broken so that the attention isn't paid to Medicaid's failings and problems with funding? So I think it is a big fight. And I think, um, you know, that's where our attention needs to be paid. All the blogs were, and I will admit I blog too, about, you know, if he's really going to do Team of Rivals, why did he just meet with conservatives that night? It should have been a transpartisan gathering. But the bigger problem is that push on the entitlement front. Um, in the next segment of our interview, let's talk about how the progressive movement and the nation positions itself vis-a-vis -vis Obama. And, and to what extent do you articulate objectives that go far past what Obama's talking about? Please join us again with Katrina Vander Heuvel in the next segment of our interviews. Donate today and receive a new documentary film available to members of the Real News Network. The History of the National Security State with legendary author Gore Vidal. Bonus features of the DVD include an in-depth response to Vidal from ex-CIA analyst Ray McGovern, who served under seven U.S. presidents, an exclusive interview with Colin Powell's former chief of staff Larry Wilkerson, and an insightful interview with oil policy analyst Antonia Yuhas. The news magazine of the screen. Living glimpses of history in the making. Hollywood and Washington, there's a symbiotic relationship. They both deal with illusions. Reality doesn't often uh, play much of a part. I think I saw through a myth of the uh, Cold War almost from the beginning. I was a Washington political kid from a political family. Roosevelt first had radio because he had a this great speaking voice that everyone liked to hear. Truman proceeded to break every arrangement that Roosevelt had set up for a peaceful coexistence. And Truman thought that it would be a good idea. Why not just stay armed all the time? 
And then he devised the national security state. You've got to go up and swear allegiance to the United States or else you're a commie. I mean, we, were, we had imported fascism. We get Dwight Eisenhower, who said that we have this great military industrial complex. It is a dangerous thing. And he said, this is going to change everything. And the way our country's governed, it's going to change us politically. Along comes Jack Kennedy, who wanted to make his mark, believed in the Cold War. But he said, in this kind of politics, it is the appearance of things that matters. I think everybody should take a sober look at the world about us. The national security state still exists, only it isn't communism anymore, it's terrorism. This is the most serious thing that has happened in the history of the United States. Knowledge is power. We need an honest new system. We need the real news. This is the sort of thing we can build right now without anyone else's permission from the government or from the business community. It's the powers in our hands. If we're not gonna sleepwalk into more wars, we think we need to start with a television news network that won't bow to pressure and has the courage to seek facts. And that means independent economics. And that's why we need you. Make a tax-deductible donation now of at least $10 a month or a one-time give of at least $75. As a thank you for your support, we will send you the new documentary film, The History of the National Security State.